Hey guys, Cal with Bucking Bushcraft here. Um, gonna start off some summer videos here. I know I've been pretty quiet lately, but uh, I just got back from a conference in uh, Baltimore uh, for a technology group I'm in. Uh, and I just got back last night and uh, I had a request for a uh, tree ID video. So that's what this is gonna be. Um, figured it'd be good now because the leaves are all finally in. Uh, best way to identify a tree is by its bark and leaves. Uh, so, I'm going to show you the basic stuff that grows up here in the uh, northern boreal forest. So, uh, let's get started. Alright, this tree here that was directly behind me, this is called black cherry. Uh, it's um, kind of like a grayish tint. Um, it's alternate branched, meaning that uh, the branches... Uh, don't line up on either side and opposite branch there would be one here and a good acronym for that is mad horse which is M stands for maple A stands for ash D stands for dogwood and horse stands for uh, horse chestnut and those are basically the only ones we really have up here um, leaves um, Try to get that out of the way. Um, veined on the back. Why do I have ants crawling on me? All right, leaves here. Um, toothed. Um, oblong shaped. Um, it's about the average size of a leaf, and they're called black cherry because. They give off these little cherries. Now these ones aren't ripe yet, but I've got one large pith comes out. They normally turn uh, dark, but you can see you can see there's some up in there, um, and they're normally green uh, when they're budding. Um, and this has a tendency to have growths on it, like this, and it almost, when it gets older, it looks like it's breaking out of the bark, and it also gives off this, um, resin, uh, kind of sap, and when you, when it first comes out, it's very soft, but when it's exposed, it'll harden up. It's, uh pretty gooey but that um, you can actually take this I heard I haven't tried it but you can take this and boil it down and make some sort of a uh, cough syrup with it but that's black cherry that's a pretty common tree up around here um, next one right here is uh, maple Maple's uh, quite common. They're almost everywhere. All in New England, at least. Um, the leaf on the Canadian flag. Um, it's the backside. Very toothed. Um, the tooth, the tooths on the leaves, are um, as opposed to like if you see a palm tree or something that it's got very smooth leaves. Um, the colder the climate, the more jagged edges you need because of uh, evaporation. And if they can't evaporate, they can't uh, really get like the nutrients up into them. Um, so here's what I was talking about. Here's the opposite branching. You see how those are directly apart from each other? Whereas opposed to over here, they they are not. Um, this is a little maple sapling right here. It's got a grayish bark. You can see it right here. Um, and this is sugar maple. Uh, red maple here has very, very red uh, stems. And um, you can tap these trees in the spring up here for um, the sap. It can be boiled down to make maple syrup. 
Uh, there, it's good um, spoon wood or utensil wood. Be, even though it is hard to carve, it um, it's not poisonous. Um, but the um, maple is a r relatively hard wood. Uh, black cherry is a hard wood. And there's a little little guy in the back here. Let's see if I can get to him. This is uh, birch. This is uh, paper birch. And you can see there's the leaf. These ones are um, about the same size as a black cherry, but less uh, less rounded. Looks like the bugs have been getting at these. Um, these are opposite branched. You can see those ones are close, but they're still off. Um, and birch is pretty self-explanatory. It's got the um, this isn't a very good example of birch, but it's got the uh, bark that comes off, very full of oils. Um, what else do we have? Here is some um, more. No, this is so it's not silver birch. Um, gray birch, I want to say, because one of the birches has almost. It's got a leaf that looks like a uh, a wood sorrel. Um, we have poplar. It's a poplar tree here. Aspen tree. We've got that unique uh, shaped leaf here. Almost looks like a heart. Um, they also have a grayish tint to them. Alternately branched. Um, when this is dead and dry, it makes a really good uh, bow drill wood. Um, and that's basically it for deciduous trees. Um, for uh, coniferous trees, we have um, eastern white, uh, pine, and uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Pine's pine. Uh, that's we have a little bit of scotch pine up here, but not much more than that. Um, balsam fir. Um, you can tell there's the uh, the only other one that looks the only only other uh, conifer we have up here looks identical to this. It's called spruce, white spruce, and it basically looks identical. And it's kind of um, patchy up here. So it's pretty hard to find, but it looks identical to this. And the way you can tell the difference between them is uh, balsam fir, uh, fir and spruce, friendly fir, spiny spruce. Because when you go like when you grab them, they don't hurt. But the spruce, if you grab it, it pricks your hands and it hurts. Sometimes it'll even stick into you, depending on how thick your skin is. Um, they're uh, these guys are evergreen, so they stay green all year long. Um, they're basically your stereotypical uh, Christmas tree. Christmas trees are balsam firs. Um, and that's basically what dominates the majority of this area. That was a requested video, so I um, figured I'd show you guys uh, all the trees that go around here. So, um, that's my video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the woods.